Well, it's, uh, it's only 5.30. Sounds early, doesn't it? But uh, as you can see over here, <coughs> the sun is going down. I'm, uh, I am 75 kilometers from the next possible motel. Uh, which doesn't sound like a long way, but I've done 171 today. Quite a few hills. And I'm pretty pooped. That wouldn't be a big deal if I'd eaten in the last little while, but I made some wonders today and uh, you know, I just kind of thought that I would have some places along the way that I could get some food after I left uh, Rocky, which is what everybody calls uh, Rockhampton. So uh, I left there. Uh, I took a route that went around uh, around a big climb, a big hill climb that I, I was worried about. And uh, it was a little bit longer. It was probably 30 kilometers longer to go the way that I went, but man, it was beautiful. Well, it was a lot like a lot like this, just all of a sudden. Like I was on the coastal road, took an inland route, and ended up on here, and it's just been great. I saw a uh, saw a kangaroo, but it's dead. <laughs> it had been hit by a car and uh, or a truck or something, and uh, was on the side of the road, bloated, you know, from sitting there for two days. So I probably won't post that photo. I did take it just in case it's the only kangaroo that I see, but I doubt I'll post it. It's not pretty. But it's uh, it's a pretty intimidating animal when you see it like that up close. It's got huge claws and a tail like the size of my the size of my thigh pretty much. And it was a full grown full grown kangaroo. And I can imagine meeting one how it must uh, how it must feel. So I've been looking for them all day because you know a long time ago when uh, Ken and I did the southern tier we left uh, southern Texas for Louisiana we ended up on this flat fast road through nothing but swamp and marsh on both sides and all of a sudden we came across a big croc or big alligator uh, dead and bloated on the side of the road and shortly after that because we were now looking at we were now thinking about them. We were seeing them in the water everywhere, which was pretty cool. But that didn't happen. I didn't see any kangaroos. This is, might be the time to start noticing them, though, as it gets dark. So I figure, you know, 8:30, I'll get, I'll get into a place called Banana, and I hope that uh, I hope that there's a motel open there. It's Good Friday, so it turns out a lot of these small little crossroad communities they've they've got a hotel that would have accommodations but the hotels are closed because it's good Fridays so there's no getting a room everything's all boarded up which is what happened back there but that's good it means I have to push on and like I said that would be no big deal but I'm out of water and well I do have a Snickers I'm waiting for it to harden up again after it cools down here it's uh, just a gooey pile of chocolate and caramel and nuts right now which is pretty gross you know to scoop out of the package so anyway I uh, had a really good day it was a really good day it was an awesome day I um, uh, had a bit of a road race there was a guy going the other way I just finished 50k and I was pushing pretty hard to try and finish them before 9 um, and I did just just under 9 <coughs> 9 o'clock so I was kind of chilling and he went by the other way and then I noticed he he, well, he was kind of coasting too so then he turned around and he was heading back we were about 25 miles from Rocky 25 kilometers from Rocky so I thought I'd give him a, a race and we raced for about for, I don't know, 12k or so, but he did eventually catch me. There was a long uphill and, uh, you know, he uh, he caught me on the uphill. 
But I did give him a good run, and actually it was pretty cool because when he did catch me, we rode side by side, and he was all impressed about the bike. And, uh, and that's unusual. Usually a road rider is very close-minded about uh, anything else. You know, they, I don't know what it is about uh, like serious road riders, not guys that are you know laid back, but the guys that are like race-minded, they kind of have blinders on to everything else. It's like if it ain't on an upright bike with drop bars, then it's not a bike. <laughs> anyway, he was really impressed and I gave him all the information on it and he said he was going to go home and look it up and stuff. So, Like I said, I gave him a pretty good run for his money, but only for about 12k and then he caught me. So, uh, But he did say that he'd only done 25k that day and uh, I, was, I was nearing 70 by that time. Not to mention, you know, all the miles uh, I put on, you know, uh, in the last little while. So anyway, that's my story. I talked to another guy who uh, introduced himself by going off about how pissed off he was today is the one day of the year that they don't serve booze anywhere. You can't get booze anywhere. And uh, he's, you know, he admits he's an alcoholic and a heavy smoker, so he had a lot to bitch about as far as smoking goes too and not being allowed to smoke here and there and you know, the world's going to hell and everything. <laughs> um, but he was a cool, gritty, sun-weathered guy with a, you know, a Australian, I don't even know what you call those hats, but nice protection from a wide-brimmed hat just walking along the road. I think he was walking because he was trying to walk off his, you know, his, I think he was jonesing for a, for something uh, with a bit of booze in it. Anyway, he, uh, I was stopped under a train trestle where there was some shade and it was really nice because there hadn't been any shade for quite a while and he walked by and I'd seen him like 10 minutes earlier walking and I waved and he waved. So when he walked over I said hi and we talked about all kinds of stuff. He, he just talked and talked and talked and talked. And you know so he gave me a heads up about snakes, spiders, <laughs> um, stuff like that. You know reminded me, I don't really need any reminding but reminded me about the road trains and stuff like that. So that was that and then at that point, because he told me that there was a hell of a climb coming up if I kept going that way, that was just after I made the decision to turn away from, you know, the Bruce Highway and uh, head in. And then I saw this big hill in front of me and I'd stopped under the trestle and he showed up. He said, yeah, it's a big hill. A lot of trucks don't even make it up there. So I decided to head into Rocky, go to McDonald's. <laughs> because they've got free Wi-Fi there, so I went to McDonald's and uh, uh, used it. Took a look at some maps close up and stuff and made a decision. I, I was half thinking that I was going to abandon the whole itinerary right here, right now, and go along the coastal highway all the way up to Cairns. It's another 1,100 kilometers, which would be cool and then uh, and beautiful. And then uh, figure out how to step west from there. It would put me in a corner. I don't know how I would do it, but maybe I could just fly out of there or something. But anyway, in the end I found a way around the mountains that was west. And that took me inland, away from the coastal highway, and I decided that was the thing to do because, well, a lot of reasons. Following the coastal highway, you're... It's a mix of truckers, and Easter weekenders with their boats and their trailers and you know and construction guys and it's just a very very busy road even now any other night along that highway heading northwest uh, there's no way I'd be talking like this because well I'll show you the shoulder Uh, you can see that's not much of a shoulder and, uh, and and that's actually a pretty good one and uh, sorry it's like I was talking into a mic there <laughs> and so uh, 
that's what I'd be on because there'd be just 